Never before have we had a movie where we cared so much about a group of ants. Okay, fine, but this one's about a superhero. Ant-Man! Judging by the initial trailers, Marvel didn't seem to be putting a lot of effort into Ant-Man, at least compared to the rest of their movies. I mean, Ant-Man's kind of an obscure hero. His only real powers was the ability to shrink and talk to ants. And even though in the comics he's one of the founding members of the Avengers, Ant-Man's been really left to the side so far as far as the movies have been going. Plus, if you know anything about the history of Ant-Man, the role was originally filled by Hank Pym, but in the movie, it's filled by Scott Lang, the second Ant-Man. Now, personally, I'm not really into comics, and I know next to nothing of the character going into this. Anything I've learned was from watching Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes and watching Linkara's videos. And even then, I was still able to pick up on a lot of the references. There was one scene early on where we had Dr. Pym talking with an associate. He and the associate were discussing whether or not the original Ant-Man was actually a thing. Pym says no, and then the associate goes on and saying, That's right, the original Ant-Man was just a myth, a legend, a tale to astonish. Tales to Astonish was actually the first comic series that Ant-Man appeared in. That's funny, the writers really knew what they were doing with this one. But what's the story actually about? Well, we have Scott Lang, who's just gotten out of a three-year prison sentence for robbery, or burglary, rather, and is trying to get his life back on track. However, because of pressures at his company and the threat of looming planetary destruction, Hank Pym finds he's in need of a thief. So he reaches out to Scott and eventually recruits him to become the new Ant-Man. The story at that point really becomes a very basic, reluctant hero kind of story. Scott doesn't want to do this, but he sees the importance of it, and it does give him a chance to be the hero that his daughter already thinks he is. So we have the setup, the training montage, and then the final fight. A basic story, and not really spectacular in its own way, what really makes it work is what I always tell everyone makes any good story work, the characters and the universe. Now this movie makes so much more sense if you're caught up with all the other Marvel movies. There are numerous references throughout about all the other movies, including an awesome cameo by Falcon, perhaps my favorite of the newest Avengers. Scott Lang is also introduced as a very comedic character. He has a dry wit about him, and yet, given the situations he's in, that works perfectly. I have never laughed at a Marvel movie as much as I have with this one. Nothing gut-busting, but you will have yourself a great time. And this is important because comedy is one of the fastest ways to get your audience to like a character. If you're uninitiated with Ant-Man, going into the movie, he doesn't sound like he's that impressive a hero. He can change size, he can talk with ants. So what? Iron Man has fucking laser hands. But, through very good character writing and a very entertaining job at explaining what the Ant-Man powers exactly are, he quickly becomes one of the most impressive members of the Avengers lineup. I mean, this might be the post-movie buzz I'm still on, but right now, Ant-Man's in my top five favorite heroes. And you have a few supporting characters as well. There's Hope, who's Hank Pym's daughter, who is still pissed off at him after the mysterious disappearance of Hank's wife. Then there's Darren Cross, who plays the main antagonist and ends up becoming Yellowjacket. Then you have Scott's friends, who are composed of a wheelman, a computer expert, and Luis. Even though they have less than 10 minutes of screen time in total, they're written so well that that's all the time you need. Each one of them gets their moment to be badass. So, great characters, great universe, fun story, a lot of laughs, and I'm sorry, Pixar, Antony wins over your blue bugs. So have you guys seen Ant-Man yet? What'd you think about it? What would you do if you had an Ant-Man suit yourself? Please come up with answers other than sneaking into the girl's locker room. Whatever you thought, comment below and tell me about it. And that's one Rogue Review for July. Five more to go. Baskin Robbins always knows.